Hi guys, today I want to talk about the soft switching back converter, which is quite hard. So I will um, do a lot of theory today. I will make also the timestamps, so if, if you don't want to, to listen to the theory, just skip to the construction of the circuit. I don't care. But, uh, if you, want, but uh, you need to understand how it works, because you can't possibly put random values and expect it to work. So let's start from the hard switch and topology. The, the hard switch is basically when the, let me, let me use other colors. It's when the bus voltage, let's call it V bus and the current turn off and turn on at this point here. So basically, when the VBUS turns off, uh, you will have already the current rising. And if you compute the power, you will have uh, basically a big spike. And then you will have also here the conduction losses, because here it is uh, the switch is on. And as you, as you can see, you have the current high, for instance, 10 amps, and the the uh, the, the voltage between the drain and the source of your device is almost zero, but since there is the RDS on resistance, you will still have conduction losses equal to RDS on times I square. Uh, so you will have something like this. Forgive my drawing. But more or less, the hard switching losses are like this. And it's present the most common topologies of the CDC converter. Um, keep in mind that uh, when your MOSFET is switching, you have to take into account the RDS on versus the temperature. If you have the nominal value, so RDS on over R, which is 1 at 25 degrees, Take into account that uh, at 150 degrees, which is uh, a full load temperature, he will uh, double, even greater than even greater than two. So you have to take into account also this. Not only that, but uh, also the VGS, so the um, the the gate driver, the gate voltage driver, which arrives to the RGS on, also influences the resistance. You will see in the data sheet some graph like this. Where you, where you basically you have the voltage, we uh, have the RDS value, and the voltage, the, and the voltage V, and uh, basically the minimum the minimum value of your resistance will be as uh, the as the voltage of VGS increases. More or less, you will you will have uh, a good value at five volts if you decide to, if you are mad and decide to drive your MOSFET at one point eight volt, which is more or less the threshold volt you will have a very big RDS on, so it's not suggested. But anyway, it depends on these two values. Another factor on which the resistance, uh, so this is the first dependence on the temperature, T, this is the second dependence of the voltage VGS, and this is the third dependence uh, of basically the breakdown voltage capability of your MOSFET. So if your MOSFET is, uh, has a VDS maximum block of 200 volts, you can expect to have a greater RDS on, so the RDS, uh, the resistance of this guy will be greater than your VDS max of 50 volts, because the resistance is proportional to the breakdown voltage capability of your MOSFET by a coefficient of 2.7, if I do remember correctly. So whenever you do your design, you have to take into account of these three factors, which for the R-switch in topologies are, very, are extremely important. And now what we want to do is to simulate the soft switching. You can achieve soft switching by basically putting a snubber, but this, but the snubber or the active snubber, it is not a suggestive solution because it will dissipate. It will dissipate power. So what we will do is to use a tank resonant cell. Um, the tank resonance cell is basically made like this. I'm not talking about the LLSC converter, I'm talking just about the back. 
So you will have a circuit made like this, your MOSFET with the, your body diode, the other diode, so let's call this D2, and your resonant capacitor, CR. After this, you, you will have the back converter as always, so with the LC capacitor here. And uh, yes, uh, sorry, also with the diode uh, typically of the back converter. So now, um, so now we will analyze this and find the condition to make it work. Because the problem with this circuit is to make resonance between LR and CR. If, if some conditions are not respected, well, you are basically screwed. And I will, I will also show you in, in the simulation, but if you don't respect this condition, something bad will happen. So, the graph that we know of are like this. Um, this is the current I, which is flowing to the diode. And if, it is, in, if you put the diode in series with the, the, the MOSFET, if the diode D1 is in series with the MOSFET, you will obtain a half wave, half wave, half wave, uh, quasi resonant switching. If you put the diode in this way, like it is because you have the body diode of the MOSFET, you have a full wave. So you, you, we will study the full wave, which is the complete topology. So this is the, the waveform of the, of the, um, of the diode and now I will explain why and and now the voltage V2 which is the voltage here which called it V2 will be something like this very peculiar in hard switch topology you expect something like this but instead here you don't have any square wave you have first a bit of translation of an interval which we will call alpha and then you, you will have exactly the same um, this, this curve here we will call this interval beta we will call this interval um, we call this interval here gamma uh, in the full wave verification in this full wave sorry this goes down actually uh, gamma and this last interval here we'll call it theta okay now we have okay now we have two possible ways to explain this first I make all the demonstration and this video will be one hour long second I will give directly the formula and skip to LT spice. I use a third method, so I will uh, I use a third method, so I will explain just to obtain one interval, and the rest you can check on the book. So we will first introduce the condition of this circuit, so the, the resonance frequency alpha fr. The, the resonance frequency must be greater than the switching frequency of the circuit, otherwise nothing will happen. And the formula of this is, as you know, one over two pi radical square of your component of your zone components and the impedance characteristic of, of this is the square wave of the ratio between the two so from here nothing new under the sun and now we will we will have to find the first interval alpha so to find the interval alpha you recall that the current it flowing in, into the switch which is the same flowing into the inductor into the resonance inductor it is vi over inductance times t which is equal to omega 0 times t times vi over r0 um, so now alpha ends when the diode d2 is forward biased and so you will have the condition from this you have the condition that alpha which is the time time alpha interval alpha over vi over r0 i'm just substituting nothing new on, under the sun it is equal to the current i2 because it will be, it will be flowing on the other node because d2 is forward biased and so the current one i1 is the same of i2 so we will have this and alpha is equal to i2 times r0 over uh, vi we will we will call this parameter k for now because this parameter will be used a lot in our equation. Now, uh, 
in alpha of course to make this equation you have to know that uh, um, the diode d2 and the a1 are the q1 the transistor q1 and d2 are actually conducting this is q1 and d2 so the current is low in flowing like this now for the interval beta from the interval beta well you are here so you don't have the first solution which is zero and it is quite complex to demonstrate this i will just uh, i will just make the system the system equation and then i hope that you can solve it by yourself so we will we will have to recall the the equation of the inductor which is basically inductor times uh, di in this case of omega t over dt which is equal to the difference of the voltages in this case we have v1 minus v2 times uh, in the function of omega 0 t and the same for the capacitor remember that for the capacitor it is switched so you have cr times dv over dt the v2 omega omega t over dt which is equal to the difference of the current i1 omega 0 t omega naught t minus i2 uh, if you if you do solve this equation which is uh, you have to um, you have to you have to take this this term here put in there the same for cr So, and to solve this, you have to do, to do the integral in both sides. So, uh, I hope that you can solve this because, uh, but I, by, I, by the way, uh, I will give you the first, also the conditions, which are uh, V2 of alpha, which is obviously equal to zero. And because, because you see it, this is V2 and V2 of alpha is zero. So you see this. Okay, so this condition is true, and you in and you have that v uh, i one i one of alpha is equal to i two, because of course i one now is equal to i two in this point of alpha. This is i two by the way, and this is i one. If you solve this, you will obtain that beta it is it is equal to pi plus arc sine arc sine of uh, arc sine of i2 v naught over sorry uh, r naught over v1 which as i told you is the exactly the same the exactly same term here so you have that you have the arc sine of k plus pi now you do remember the arc sine function the domain of this must be between minus 1 and 1 so you have that i2 times r not it is under v1 it is uh, it is less than 1 now we will obtain an important condition which is i2 which is i2 must be less than v1 over r naught this is an extremely 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 important condition it says that basically the load current which is i2 i2 is interfacing with your back converter so i2 is this yeah i don't care about cr but i2 is basically the load current here if the load current does not meet this equation the transistor will not turn off by soft switching and so this circuit will not work under some load condition this is extremely important and you expect this because you can't expect to have a tank resonance uh, sorry a resonance like this and not to depend on the load r it is impossible so of course there is a condition based on the load of your converter so this is the so we will add this condition in, in with this and this you can continue also with the interval uh, theta and the main and the method is the same 
I will give just the equation, the solution of the, of the integral, which is theta, which is equal to 1 over k, 1 minus radical square of 1 minus k square. And now we can see that the sum of these intervals, the minimum switching period, the minimum period must be the sum of these intervals here. If one of these intervals is not respected, you will not have soft switching. So the final condition is 2pi over f, which f it is the normalized frequency, fs over f0, must be greater or equal than k plus pi plus arc sine of k so let me uh, let me this is alpha this is beta and now we have to add gamma which is 1 over k 1 minus radical square over minus k square in the, in our case that we are that we have the full the full circuit the full wave this becomes 2 pi. In the case of the half wave, it becomes just pi. Uh, so this is the so this is the last condition. We will make it clear like this. And now, what we can do is actually to. Um, to simulate our circuit. So let's open the lattice pies now and finally simulate our circuit. Uh, we will start with the voltage generator of 10 volts and the parameter we will use are d equal to 0 0.5 and the switching frequency of 200 kilohertz. I have already made a calculation for you so you don't have to worry about nothing. The combination which I found for my tank is 60, nan 60 hundred nano and 300 nano. And I will use the, uh, the MOS like this. And I will use the diode D1 in this position here. Let's take the first MOSF on the list and let's generate the square wave between the gate and the source. Like this. So we will have the pulse between 0 and 5 volts with a rise time of 1 nano. I honestly don't care. And the Dion is equal to Fs over d over fs and the period is 1 over the switching frequency. Let's translate to here. And, and now the only thing left to do is to use the back converter. So this is uh, our tank resonator and what we have to do now is to use the back converter itself. which is 2.2 micro and 10 micro, 60, 60, uh, 66 micro, with a load of 1 ohm. Now let's run the simulation for 10 milliseconds and let's see what happens. So as you can, the first thing that you notice is that the current uh, is that the oh, stop 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 stop. The first thing that you notice actually is the the difference between. Uh, wait, did I honestly choose uh, a switch with two hundred fifty two gate charge? Am I am I an idiot? Am I an idiot? What? 
Did I honestly choose this? Because if I look on the on the no 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 three dot three amps no 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 let's choose another one this is good no 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 don't start lagging please okay um so now the first thing that you not you that that you can notice is the current of the is the current of your inductor if you do remember the switching the, the, the waveform of the hard switching topology is basically like, like this and i can i can i can uh, um, make an, an, another topology immediately for you it, it is just this i can replicate the circuit here So we can compare the two waveforms. And that's it. So, now let's use the tile vertically, the vertically tile, and let's use the different plot panes. So this is ID of M1, of the, of, of the soft switching frequency, of the soft switching circuit. And if you see, Oops, sorry. And if you see, there are exactly the interval that I explained it to you. So you have the interval alpha. Let me uh, let me let, let me catch this. Let me catch this. And let's put it here. So as you can see, it is exactly as I explained to you. The voltage V it is it is in blue, and this is the interval alpha. The translation here is the interval alpha. Then you have the other interval between the zero point, the zero point, and when it starts, which is beta, until this guy falls to zero. And then all this resonance here is basically the interval which this guy is off. So here, theta plus uh, sigma. So it is exactly as I explained to you. Um, another thing to do is to check the Oh, sorry, this is not grounded, this is my mistake. Another thing left to do is to check the, um, the current of this with the voltage VDS. Yes, let's skip that it is a monstrosity of resonance, but there is no crossover between the two waveforms. If you do if you do watch instead this and is VDS voltage you can see that you have the crossover here and this translates to the spike in power so now you will see a beautiful thing about soft switching here there are the switch the soft switching losses and here there are the hard switching losses. Hard switching and soft switching. Big difference. So here you have a, a very big transient until 5 kilowatt of spikes. And then you have something like this, which is completely different. And if we and if you do the average, it is still it is very 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 lower in the soft switching. So basically, in the soft switching, you don't have basically any switching losses by definition, because it is a soft switching. You still have some. You still have. Uh, you still can have some switching losses for other reason, but uh, it is not the problem here. This is the soft switching and this is the hard switching. You have the spikes owing to the commutation. And here you have, uh, yes, the spikes, but uh, it's not the problem. You don't have any 
average power. So now what you can do is to see your the stability of your circuit. Uh, by the way, um, uh, by the way, this is the uh, the waveform of the of the um, of your um, resonance capacitor. Uh, so the advantages of this circuit are first less switching dissipation. But there are a lot of disadvantages, and now I can show you that. If you don't respect this condition that I showed you, it feels so bad to have wasted one time, one one life to design this just to make not work, just for a small difference in value. If I turn this in 200, ki in 200 kilohertz, it will not work. Yes, because you are not respecting the condition. And this is very, very, very wrong, as you can see. Not only that, not only that, but also not only that, but you have also a very big dependence on the output. So if I decrease the switching frequency at 150 kilohertz, you will have a very big decrease in the output. Yes, because you are changing the resonance, you are changing everything. So the frequency here is the must. Instead, in the hard switching topology, he will still have to, he will still keep to the five volts. Yes, with an increased ripple, but still almost five volts. But here it is tremendous. And uh, I don't want to talk to you about the load. The load is horrible. If you change the load, if you give too much load, it, the performance of your circuit will reduce drastically. So if we can give the same load, let's call it X, to the both, to both circuit, let's give X. And now, let's give dot param X equal to 0 0.1, you will still see that the hard topology will still survive, with more losses, but will still survive. The soft switching is a disaster. Because you are violating this condition here. And so it's a disaster. You see that uh, with a 50% duty cycle I have 1.7 volts. And I, I will end up in having more losses than the hard topology itself. So take care of this. If, I, if you put instead a, a very very light load, it's the same you will have a completely different thing. You see that the art topology, the art topology, which is the green one, still gives you... Sorry. In the light load, the art topology does not work anymore. Because here, it, here you are doing something very ghastly. The soft switching can survive. But still, the hard topology switching will work in, high lo in higher loads, always for the condition of the resonance. Now what we want to see is the efficiency. So let's check the efficiency. Let's put dot param x equal to 2, for instance. And let's call this guy O, and let's call this guy I. We will use the, the BV with a low pass filter. One kilo, one nano, uh, 100 nano. And this will be equal to VO times i of r1 and the same we will do with the input so vi times i v1 so vi times i of v1 and 
uh, we'll use this data as p in and this data as p out. The ratio of the two will give will give of course the um, the efficiency. So this is the input power and this is the output power. Uh, let me put here a minus though. I don't know why there is a minus here. Wait, the input power is, it is not so clean. So I have to increase the filter at one micro. Let's both increase the filter at one micro because uh, it is still not so clean. So there is a very big difference between the input power and the output power. Do you know why is that? I'll give you, I, I, I will give you an hint. Yes, because this is a, a, an ideal diode and the, 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 most the most power dissipation, it will come from him, just basically from him. Let's see that our, let's see that if our calculation is right. So if we make P, VP in minus VPO, it is the losses. Let's see if I am true. Let's see if I am right. So I have uh, one watt of dissipation. How much the diode dissipates as an integral? Ha! Huh, one watt. Ah, this diode is eating my efficiency. Go away. So basically my circuit, the, all the efficiency that I lost uh, is thanks to this guy here. Because of course you should keep you should uh, you, you should uh, um, uh, you should have uh, another another uh, of this another MOSFET and you will basically eliminate all the losses. But for now, let's check the efficiency, shall we? So let's make the ratio between the input power. What is going on? Uh, the input power. And uh, uh, the output power, sorry, over the input power, P in. Uh, what? Let's cancel this. So we, we have an efficiency of uh, 92%, which... which uh, uh, of course, the an efficiency it can be higher. If you do eliminate this, it will be higher until ninety eight percent. I can I can uh, because it has to be like this. Um, we can uh, decrease the load a little bit. I think that we will increase this. We 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 will actually um, we will actually decrease the losses. And if we put a shot key diode, we should decrease the losses as well. I remember that the the um, on semi family the sorry the um, om family are very good. I can still be wrong, but they should be very good. Okay, I am wrong. Sorry, <laughs> the efficiency has decreased. Let's put uh, x equal to 4. You can make, uh, um, you can sweep between the loads uh, to find your maximum point of efficiency. Generally speaking, the maximum point of e efficiency it is given at uh, higher loads. Now I have achieved 92% because the losses is given by this guy here. I think that we can end the video. I think that we can uh, end the video. 9.8, 9.3. We can end the video like this. So this is a, a ZVS 
back. Hope that you enjoy also the, the mathematics behind it. You can find it on the Fundamental Power Electronics. And uh, let's see, on the, and uh, I think that we I can close the video here. Thank you for your attention, guys, and see you in the next video.